It's been such a long journey, all the way from zero to 100, from 100 to 1,000, from 1,000 to 10,000, 10 to 50, and 50 to 100. We've recently achieved a milestone again, and um, all jokes aside, I am eternally grateful for everybody who's been sticking with the channel, sticking with the content, supporting me from the very beginning. I know there are some of you that are still here with me that have been here since 500 subscribers, so just know that I appreciate you and uh, I love you so much for being around and sticking around this long and continuing to support and continuing to show love to the channel and continuing to uh, support, you know, the different avenues that I kind of put myself in aside from, you know, just reaction channel. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot more to me than you know. Countless hours, uh, sleepless nights sometimes. It's not necessarily just the number that you see that kind of motivates you, but it's more or less the, the, the recognition and, and the reception you get from your subscribers, from other notable figures, from people's music that you've reviewed who appreciate the fact that you take the time out to actually give their project a chance. Just know I appreciate all of you guys. So in light of this, I told you guys on Twitter that I'd be doing a question and answer video and to write all your questions in the Twitter mentions and I'd be answering them in this video. Before we get to that though, there are two announcements I wanna make. Announcement number one, I know tons of you guys have been asking me Where's the next gaming video? When is the next gaming video gonna come, Sean? When is this coming? When is that coming? I've decided to make a gaming channel, and I stole one of my subscribers' ideas and decided to name it Sean Cena. That's right, the channel is gonna be named Sean Cena. It is a gaming channel, so if you want to go over there and uh, watch me, I guess, turn up to whatever game I'm playing, then you can. Um, videos are probably gonna go up over there next week. Uh, what I want to try to do with that channel is get like a 20 to 30 minute gaming video out like every week. This is still the main channel, but I kind of want to build that one at the same time. So anybody that really loves my gaming videos, anybody that really loves, you know, seeing me just go off on any game that I'm playing, go over there because videos are coming there soon. Hit the subscribe button. Tell everybody you know. It's going to get lit over there real soon. I'm, I'm talking about lit. And announcement number two. Uh, someone told me on my Logic video about two months ago that... Uh, he'd be totally down for me making a Patreon. And I told him I most likely would do so, but not at that current time because I didn't feel like it was reasonable enough for me to make a Patreon considering that I wasn't even at 100,000 subscribers yet. Not saying you need to be at a certain amount to start, you know, receiving donations, but, but he was telling me, you know, I'd be totally down to donate. And then I got a slew of messages in my DMs on Twitter after that, with people telling me, hey man, you really should make a Patreon considering this whole YouTube situation. But I'll tell you now, I I'm not making this Patreon on because I'm worried about the state of YouTube. I'm actually making this Patreon because I want to continue to increase the quality of this content while I am growing in subscribers. A, a lot of people don't know, man, but taking care of a channel and constantly trying to increase content at the same time is very expensive. I work full time on my own and over the past six months I've spent 2,500 bucks of my own money just on lenses. Not taking into account camera bodies, different microphones, different lighting, constant batteries. I mean this isn't even my main setup and this is literally like $2,000 I'm recording with right now. Starting a gaming channel. That's about a million dollars. So just know that I am going to increase the quality of the content of this channel regardless whether you donate or not I'm still going to increase the quality of this content this isn't an ultimatum and this is this isn't one of those videos where it's like oh if you want to see me continue my YouTube channel then you'll donate like no I'm still going to do what I do regardless if I received zero donations or if I received a million donations I'm still going to increase the quality of this content this patreon is literally just made for anyone who wants to support me while I'm supporting this channel and while I'm being the head of this channel and constantly trying to reinvent myself and evolve and grow as a content creator. Whether you donate a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, twenty dollars, a million dollars, please let it be a million dollars. There's no hidden access. Uh, it's just purely if you want to support me while I'm doing what I do on this channel. Only reason I've decided not to actually put any hidden access that you would be getting or any uh, secret access you'd be getting is because anything that you were probably gonna ask for, I was most likely gonna do on this channel anyway, whether that be a classic album review, whether that be adding more discussion videos, whether that be adding a, a new rapper to the catalog of my ranked series where I rank the person's best album. There's the link. If you wanna support, great. If you can, that's awesome. If you can't, I still love you. I still want you to come to the channel and feel like you're a part of everybody. Don't feel bad if you can't donate. Just continue doing what you're doing because you're doing a great job at it, which is supporting by 
just watching and clicking the video so I appreciate you let's hop into this question and answer video now because I know me being at a hundred thousand subscribers there's still so much about me that you guys have no clue about I'm gonna start the video off with a little bit more lighthearted questions and then we're gonna ease into the questions that kind of require a bit of a longer answer the deeper stuff if you run if you want to get deep with Sean C, stick around. Uh, first question comes from one of my favorite people on Twitter is uh, Manny or Lord Minter. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? If I could choose a superpower, the ability to teleport. <sighs> but no, I'd be fat. No, I don't want to teleport. No. Uh, super speed. Super speed. The super speed ability. That's what I want. And I'm assuming you burn a mass amount of calories moving at like a billion miles a minute. Lord asks, what's your Snapchat? My Snapchat is L A Z Y E A S T. It's Lazy East on Snapchat. Don't go over there expecting anything philosophical. It's literally just me, random days of the week, posting pics of my face. Don't get excited because there's nothing going on over there. Alarming Adam, Sasuke or Naruto? You, you gotta have both. You gotta have both. You can't have one. You have to have both. There's no world without Sasuke and there's no world without Naruto. You need them both. I don't want to hear any argument. Shut up. Newman X Newman asks, could you see yourself doing other content on your channel had it not been centered around music? Uh, I've had channels before in the past that, you know, were mildly successful that I did not have time to continue running. I had a gaming channel, had a skit channel. Uh, one of those channels had like 30,000 subscribers. The other one had around 15, 20,000 subscribers. I always kind of knew generally like the algorithm of YouTube and how it worked and, you know, generally how I would be able to mesh myself into the crowd. But uh, I never really had time to do it, and I still technically don't, but I've always made time to things that I enjoy. YouTube has always been a hobby for me, so uh, doing it in this way, in this fashion, was only natural because I've been all, I've technically been doing it for years. So a uh, long answer short, yeah, probably, but at the same time, I don't think I would, you know, stick around with it because it's it was really strenuous at the time that I was trying to do it. I was trying to do it at 16 when I'm still running like a love life, a personal life, a school life, everything like that. So it wasn't gonna work when I was a teenager. Gibberish Ho asks, why are you so handsome for no reason? First of all, I have a reason. Second of all. I guess first of all, I kind of covered it. John Sword asks, what are some of your favorite artists outside of hip hop? I like Bruno Mars, I, I like the Beatles, not mentioning them in the same conversation obviously, but uh, as far as artists that I like that are outside of hip hop, I really love the Fleet Foxes. Check out their new album. Um, Bob Marley, Adele. I, I try to get into some of Lana Del Rey's stuff, but I think she's just way too emo for me to really enjoy her music. I'm missing a ton of other people that I normally listen to. I used to listen to Coldplay and uh, Nickelback as well. There was a band called Red that I listened to. They started off as more of like a conservative Christian kind of band, but they, you know, kind of incorporated some metal into uh, their music as well, so that made it like a lot more interesting. They weren't just this boring Christian group. There's more that are gonna come to me, I just can't think of them all right now. Maria asks, besides music, what do you enjoy? Sex. Uh, a good movie. I really like a good movie. And, and War of the Planet of the Apes is coming out uh, in, in two weeks. I'm so excited. I haven't seen any movies this entire year, really. And if there's anything that's gonna push me to go to the movies, it's gonna be that. Mentor Suggs asks, what's your guilty pleasure? Abella Anderson. You don't know who she is? Look her up. Cameron Wiley, what inspired you to do a YouTube channel? Also, how you doing fam? Cameron, thank you. I'm doing fine. How are you doing, you know? Did you find him? You look like you're looking for somebody in your profile picture. Honestly, the thing that inspired me to do YouTube was trying to save people money and time. I've always equated time to money and I feel like, you know, if you spend your money on something and then you also have to spend your time on it. That's like twice the amount of effort that you would normally have to put into something that you would just like eat or regularly consume on a day-to-day -day basis. So knowing that this is gonna consume your time and it's gonna consume your money, which time is money, so it's taking money twice. I wanted to let people know if you know the music that they're listening to is something that they should actually be investing time into, or maybe they could live vicariously through me, hear me listen to it, give my thoughts, my first opinion, my first impressions on it, and uh, tell them how I feel about it, and if I think it's worth the purchase. And if they do feel like it's worth it, then great, go cop the album, but if not, stay away. That's what inspired me to do this kind of channel, or at least a channel that's based solely off of music. Jippy the Hippie asks, do you hate Drake because he's Jewish? Obviously. Little Johnny asks, what's the one album you wish you'd done a reaction to? Oh man, Bruno Mars, um, Unorthodox Jukebox. 
his second album I think that he released. That album when I was listening to it was legit sex to my ears. I could literally picture myself doing certain things in each one of these songs and you know, having a song for each setting and it will be just be perfect. The mood, everything will be perfect. Nick Shannon asks, where the hell is your anime YouTube review slash reaction page at, my G? See, what happened, there was an asteroid that literally only attacked my channel and like, it was a base of people that were guarding my YouTube channel and then like, somebody shot a missile at it along with the asteroid, uh, and then it just blew up the channel and I couldn't upload to it anymore. Oh, what's that? Man, that's crazy. Oh, wow. Oh. Pedro Brooks, my birthday was on June 24th. Can I get a shout out? No. All right, go ahead. Yes. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Uh. Yannick Rodeo asks, Pac or Biggie? They each fall into their own categories. I'm not falling for this trap, all right? Pac, because embodiment of hip hop. Biggie, because lyrics there's no discussion here gabby or whatever asks would you rather be forced to listen to lil yachty for 36 hours straight or eat 100 live roaches i said roaches roaches i'm not eating any roaches i mean lil yachty uh, 100 uh, thir wait 36 or we have option number three <laughs> theresa may asks what's your arm tag uh my arm tag is literally just a timepiece. uh the the you guys usually only see one side of it but there's a side on the inside uh that's a little bit more detailed the other side actually is left unfinished purposefully because there are other things that i want to put in it uh, i'm not the type of person that gets tattooed that often i have another tat that you're only gonna see if we're gonna get into me like, i got this one when i was like 19 years old and i'm 21 now so i'll probably get another one this year but I really like to think hard about the type of tattoos I get. Also, I have really, really dark features. My hair is really dark. My eyes are really dark. My eyebrows are really dark. My facial hair is really dark. So naturally, I feel like I should have really, really dark tattoos because they they just feels like it's just naturally a part of my skin whenever I'm walking around. So I don't really like colorful tattoos or anything like that. I want it to complement me and I want it to go along with my features. So, but yeah, my tattoo is literally just a timepiece. King Kawach. What was the album that got you into hip hop and what are your favorite rap albums ever? I'll make a video about my favorite rap albums ever separately, probably later down the line. But uh, the album that got me into hip hop strongly was definitely Nas Ilmatic. I listened to that thing when I was four years old. Uh, my dad used to play it all the time when we were driving around in the car. And my dad knew everything about hip hop. When I was younger, he was telling me like, Tupac hated Nas. I was like, I don't even know these people. But he was such a good storyteller and his flow was just so consistent on beat all the time. It was just like hard for me not to like him. I listened to hip hop all my life, but I never really got deep into the genre until I was around 16 years old, 16, 17 year years old. I knew about a ton of artists prior to that, but I got deep into it at a later age. Kung Fu Brian asks, name an artist that is your guilty pleasure to listen to. It's not really an artist, but it's just this one song in particular, all right? It's a Miley Cyrus song that is from the Hannah Montana soundtrack, and it goes like, love, love, love. And I don't know why, but sometimes I play that song and I'm just like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. I have problems, okay? Don't judge me. Lame former, top five rappers of all time, favorite movie, and who won, Nas or Jay-Z? I'm not answering the first question. First of all, this is three questions in one question. You think you're slick, I'm not letting you slide. Number two, favorite movie, probably Goodfellas. Goodfellas or The Lion King. I know those are polar opposite movies, but they kind of have the same message, pay attention. And who won, Nas or Jay-Z? I would say they both won. Nas delivered one of the best diss tracks ever, which was Ether. And Jay-Z is married to Beyonce. He has a kid, healthy children. He's rich as all hell. Like, how is he not winning? Sophisticated gamer, uh, what do you think of the rap genius that is Jake Paul? Jake Paul has been a genius since he came out of the womb. I mean, if you don't acknowledge that Jake Paul is literally ahead of Tupac and there's no artist that's ever going to be greater than him, then you're asleep. Okay, you just sleep. Lemon Shelves asks, what artist are you anticipating a drop from the most? I would like to see a project from Travis Scott. I would like to see another project from Schoolboy Q. I would like to see another project from um, ASAP Rocky. I can't really think of anybody else at the moment. Anytime Andre Three Stacks wants to drop an album, that I'm, I'm fine with it. Marky Next Door asks, if you were in a room with Miami, Big Quint, and Very Pale Hipster, AKA Tabby, and only two could leave, what you doing? Well, f wait, 
Pause, fam. Pause. Favorite producers slash beat makers. I would say probably ones that you know are more people are familiar with me, like Mike Dean and Metro Boomin. My favorite producers are probably between No ID. Uh, Timbaland and Pharrell. Which rappers do you think did not meet their full potential? I would say Lupe Fiasco. I would also say Vince Staples in that, is in that category. Although his career isn't over, I still feel like he hasn't reached his max potential. Like he hasn't shown us his final form yet. I would say Hobson. Uh, Hobson's just ridiculously corny, but he was a capable rapper. He just was way too pretentious for his own good and his corn level was like through the roof. Jackie Smalls, what are your thoughts on the shift in music, specifically hip hop, over the past decade? Well, the thing is, I don't really think there's been like a, an, an incredible shift in music, but I do think there has been an addition uh, to other genres, like hip hop being the main one. In, in my opinion, I think it's lovely that we can actually listen to hip hop and all be considered hip hop fans and there be an artist for each person that wants to hear a specific thing. Um, I love that it's not so confined to the boom bap beats that we would get that the old heads now only think is good and they can't find value in anything else besides the era that they grew up in. I like that we have new artists that are able to cater to certain demographics. I like that we have artists that, you know, allow people to want to express themselves in different ways and uh, it makes it more fun for everybody to want to be an artist when you have people that are pioneering different sounds and different styles of music that don't just traditionally fall into one category of hip-hop or rap. I think the fact that this is happening is uh, leading towards a further evolution of music that we've yet to see and in my opinion I think it's cool. You know I'm excited to see what, ha what happens next. That doesn't mean that all change is good change but change is, is inevitable. You need you know an evolution. You need something new to happen. You need uh, progression. So uh, hip hop cannot stay in that same stage forever, so it needs to evolve to something else. That does not mean that I'm a, I'm a fan of mumble rap, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to completely turn my brain off if new rap or new forms of hip hop come into my life or come into the industry. I'm still going to accept it and digest it the same way I would anything. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to try my best though. Nah. It still sounds wrong, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. What goals do you have set for your channel? Much like anything, when I start doing it, I have zero expectation for it. I do it because I enjoy doing it, and uh, if I grow while doing it, then that's great. If I don't, you know, we'll take it up then. But uh, I don't really have any goals for this channel. I didn't have any goals for the channel when I made it. Uh, I guess the only goal I would have is to get as many subscribers as I can. Uh, it's not necessarily a specific amount. It's just me getting wherever if i get to 200 300 400 500 a million two billion three billion i don't it doesn't matter uh, i'm just making the channel making the content because i enjoy music the martel moore asks what video are you most proud of and how do you find time to make videos love your content by the way it's inspired me to do better, better videos thank you i don't know what videos i'm most proud of i would like to say all of them but literally i can't watch any of my videos before 2017 without cringing I can't even watch any of my videos before March 2017 without cringing. Uh, they're just ridiculously bad and uh, that's another reason why I'm continuing the journey to increase content and you know further my channel and continue to get better. Uh, as far as time is concerned, it is a struggle trying to find time. Uh, like I said, I do work full time already and it is pretty strenuous sometimes to have to do this or not really have to but I really want to to kind of be honest with you I really want to grow this channel but you have to realize that sacrifices will be made as far as your time is concerned and if you're willing to do that then and be consistent and work hard at it then I, I would say that you're probably gonna grow eventually as well a Dan Castillo asks I'm sorry I just pronounce it that way whenever I see that last name I always pronounce it that way how do you motivate yourself how do you keep yourself motivated or do you when you were burned out what the fuck? what's your process for that life living in the future instead of living in the present when it comes to YouTube is kind of how you have to work that out um, just do everything that you're doing now knowing that it's for the next day. Uh, the, the work I'm doing right now isn't for today, it's actually for tomorrow. And understanding that you have to move through YouTube knowing that you're making decisions and putting in work that's gonna benefit your channel later as opposed to right at this very moment. Put in enough work anywhere, do enough uh, of anything, eventually it's going to pay off. Uh, staying motivated, you know, it is difficult at times because you, you're constantly doing something like this and you wonder if you're ever gonna get you know that recognition and you're putting in 
you know, so much work and so many hours. It's like, Jesus, man, like, is anybody going to give me a break? And uh, it's difficult to keep that, you know, kind of momentum going and then, you know, try to work and try to maintain my personal life and pr try to maintain the love life and try to, you know, keep myself mentally healthy and balanced and try to be physically healthy and active at the same time. It is difficult, but I think it can be managed. What cereal do you eat? I eat anything. I'll eat the the the, the Captain Crunch all berries. I'll eat the, uh, the the French Toast Crunch and the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I'll eat Cocoa Puffs. I'll eat Fruit Loops. I know I'm a fruit. Whatever. Go f yourself. Guitar Rican asks, When did you and Tabby become friends? We're not friends. We're lovers. Which music-based content creators do you watch slash would recommend? There are really a very small group of channels that I subscribe to when it, you know, for music opinions or music analysis in any sort. And uh, you guys normally see me in those sections of YouTube. I mess with Tabby. I mess with Big Quint. I mess with uh, the Needle Drop. I really mess with Dead and Hip Hop, Miami. Uh, there are really select few people that I, whose opinions I even care about when it comes to music, or whose videos I enjoy when it comes to making, you know, videos regarding music. So I mean, if you don't already know who those people are, I guess you know those would be good places to start. I know there are other review channels out there like Spectrum Pulse and uh, ARTV. I've seen them. Um, I know there are other music channels out there as well. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm lost. There, there are a lot. Thirteenth Unknown asks, what did you work as before being a YouTuber? Um, I still work uh, and I'm still a YouTuber. Uh, I currently work at a manufacturing company where we develop artificial intelligence and that artificial intelligence is used in some of like the biggest brands. Uh, we also develop software and you know this is intelligence that's used for companies like uh, vehicles that they want to kind of uh, drive themselves like the new Tesla. Uh, incorporating tools uh, into designs that people use like Apple or like Samsung uh, and there's very simple designs very simple tools but they're tools that help the experience for the consumer it's a really unique and very fun job and it pays well and it's it's a very nice environment uh, I think for me it's uh, helped me when it comes to being creative and you know kind of thinking about things from a bird's eye point of view and looking at things from a broader perspective like oh, okay now I can see the big picture I can see how someone could utilize this I can see how this could be useful here I can see how someone could need this uh, recently began manufacturing for hospitals so the IV machine, the heart monitors, everything like that, though that's technology that we actually help manufacture software for or manufacture artificial intelligence for the the mechanics within the bed to help it move a certain way while you're in the hospital. So um, I'm proud of that. I think it's cool that I'm able to be a part of something that's like way bigger than me. Real glitter gal asks, Am I gonna marry you someday? Probably. Yes. Sergio Del Castillo asks, What is your least favorite part? about reviewing music on YouTube it has to be people not accepting the fact that what you say and what you do are opinionated. Uh, if your opinion doesn't coincide with what they believe, they think you don't know what you're talking about. But the minute you agree with what they say, oh man, you're the best person on this platform. This is why I only mess with you. This is why I'm only subscribed to you. Like, get out of here. I'm not, I'm not here to validate anyone's opinion. I'm here to give my own opinion. If it was that easy to give your opinion about the music, you would have a channel too. So don't come at me because I actually had the courage to make a channel and that I actually wanted to get my opinion on music out there and not be afraid of what people thought about it and be unfiltered or try to be as unfiltered as possible. If you have a problem with it, you can make your own video. Whether or not you're capable of doing that or want to is completely uh, dependent upon you. I also hate how if you don't like a song or if you don't like a particular thing that an artist does or says, people will completely undermine the rest of your video and just focus on that one part. Like, oh, I don't like the fact that you said this here, but I'm not gonna compliment you on the extensive review you did at the end. I'm not gonna compliment you on the fact that this was a really well thought out opinion or analysis. I'm not gonna compliment that. You said this one thing I didn't like, so that means the whole video is trash. Would you rather listen to the Russ album again or just end it all? Yeah, I think I'll just end it all. All right, now that we're done with all those questions, let's get into the anonymous questions, the ones that didn't wanna be shown on video. Anonymous asks, a message for your haters? I don't really believe in haters like that I believe people who dislike you and people who do like you but at the same time I'm not so ignorant to the point where I'm thinking that everyone who has an issue with the kind of content that I make uh, is immediately a hater you could have legitimate reasons for disliking me and that's fine but what I don't like is the people that constantly come back 
knowing that they say, oh man, I don't like this guy. Like, why are you here then? Next question, what was your motivation for doing the collaboration with Anthony Fantano? And do you have a future collaboration coming? Huge shout out to Fantano uh, for even, you know, bringing me and bringing me along for that review because uh, uh, I was, you know, excited to do the review. Not because I was like, oh man, this is going to give me a ton of subscribers because in reality, it gave me like two, 3,000 subscribers. But the point of me doing the collaboration, I think the point that also Fantano understands is it's not just you're trying to get more views or you're trying to get more subscribers. It's adding legitimacy to a channel. It's basically him putting his hand on my shoulder and telling his audience, hey, this guy's all right. And it adds a check mark. It adds a, a level of authenticity to your channel and it helps people understand that if the guy who is literally the most popular, most polarizing figure when it comes to music reviews on the website is giving this guy a cosign, then obviously there's something that he's got. Uh, the review almost didn't happen that day. His schedule was incredibly tied up. I had a set, you know, time that I would have liked to, uh, you know, record the review. So the fact that he was so willing to kind of, you know, compromise and, you know, just be uh, willing to do the review in the first place, I appreciated it. And I'm sure if there's an album that, you know, he wants to tackle in the future and, you know, he sees me fit to be one of the people to talk to it about, then I'm sure we'll handle it then. But I still watch the guy's content, so just because we did a collab, that doesn't mean that I stopped watching him or that I stopped enjoying his videos, because I definitely still do, and uh, I'm still going to support, so. How do you review an album, and do you think it's fair to give a score on an album after one list? Uh, to be honest, everybody consumes music differently. I wouldn't tell somebody that you need to listen to an album five times to get everything that I get out of an album in one listen. Um, I wouldn't sit here and try to judge anybody because they say an album is good or bad if they've listened to only one album. I definitely think you need to listen to the whole thing, but uh, if you only want to listen to it one time, there are people out there who think, oh man, you know, if you don't listen to an album as many times as I do, you must not know what you're talking about. In my opinion, if you can develop a solid opinion about the music you're listening to, even if it is after only one listen, and you've gotten a good grasp of what the album is about and you're able to form a solid opinion, and a lot of people don't think you're able to, you can't form an opinion on music if you don't listen to it 16 times. I think that's incredibly arrogant and very close-minded to say, assuming that people digest music the same way you do. Now, if we're talking about a full-length album review, uh, again, that's another situation where if you wanted to listen to it one time, you could upload your review of it afterwards. Hopefully you have enough solid information about the project to actually form a, a well-rounded opinion. Uh, myself, I would listen to an album uh, and that'd be the only album I listened to over the weekend, like my Jordan Lucas review. I listened to that thing Thursday night, listened to it all of Friday, all of Saturday, half of Sunday, and then got my review out. I don't need to sit here and be with an album 8 billion times to tell you whether or not I think it's good or bad. Bad comparison, but you don't need to eat, you know, the same food every day to know whether or not you like it. You don't need to have sex with the same girl 20 times in a week before you know whether or not it's good. During that three days, I listened to the Joyner Lucas Project about 12 times. The whole thing. I've sit with it enough. I've had my time with it. When I listen to a project, I'm only listening to that body of work up until I do my review of it. When it comes to the first reactions and the first reviews, uh, I do those literally to get my, my quickest, most uh, mashed together thoughts out as quickly as possible. Um, and usually, I'm you know I'm not saying that I'm the best person at that, but I think I get a solid groundwork. I think I get the best first impressions when it comes to. Uh, giving people how I feel about the music after I've just listened to it and you know kind of formulating my thoughts well enough to give people a decent analysis or a decent breakdown of what it is that I just listened to and I really try my best to give people that first impression and letting them know whether or not I think this thing is worth their time so long story short I think everybody reviews music differently um, and respect those people who do review it different all you can say to that person is if they're doing it wrong, then you'll know with their commentary. You'll know with the things that they say. You'll know because they just won't know what they're talking about or they'll be missing too many concepts or they'll be missing this or missing that. The people that kind of come over to hate on some of the stuff that I say about other artists are generally just coming because they don't like the fact that my opinion doesn't coincide with theirs. So rather than actually uh, try to understand why I feel the way I feel about a certain artist and about what they say or about you know the certain patterns that they use, they'd rather say something like, you just don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, well, why is it that you feel I don't know I don't know what I'm talking about? And they're just like, oh, you just don't know. And I'm like, well, I can't take that opinion seriously either. So until you can combat my opinion with your own and, you know, at least at the very least, try to give me a, an alternative mindset here, 
I don't want to hear you talking about what I do or don't know when I've listened to the album enough times to give an opinion on it. And even if I've listened to it one time, my ears are different than yours. I hear things differently. Different does not make me better. It just means that I'm listening for certain purposes and you're probably listening for certain purposes. That doesn't make you better than me. That doesn't make me better than you. It just means that we're all listening to music and consuming it different ways. Do you ever think you'd become a story time YouTuber? Um, no. I think story times are really corny. Um, if I'm going to tell a story, it's going to be something worth telling, like my lung surgery or the time I was uh, 13 and I was in my first shootout. I mean, like, why do I need to tell you about losing my virginity or talk the first time I got hit or the first time this happened or the first time that? Like, if I'm going to tell you a story, it's going to be something that doesn't happen to everyone. I'm not buying the fact that your teacher gave you head in the classroom while all the students were watching with the iPhone 9s out and the principal didn't suspend you because you were six foot two and you played for the football team and you got a scholarship. Like, just, just stop, okay? Story times, just don't, don't, don't even, don't. But I will make a video out of my lung story situation because that was something that was heavily impactful. I have another story about the time I was involved in a shootout when I was 13, but that was really dangerous and I don't really know if I can make that funny. But we'll see if I can make it in a certain way, then I'll definitely upload it one day. Where are you from? I am from Detroit, Michigan. I don't currently live there, but I grew up there. I used to be there all the time. Look, on a good day, Detroit is great. On a bad day, you know what it is. <laughs> How has the YouTube ad boycott affected you? As I said before, it hasn't affected me because I don't rely on the income that I make from YouTube. Anything I get from YouTube is just extra. Um, but at the same time, if I ever were to do something like YouTube full time, uh, having, like I said, that Patreon link would be great because I wouldn't even need to go through YouTube to get any revenue. I'd be fully supported by the crowd of people that watch me and I'd be f supported by my audience. I wouldn't be uh, wondering what YouTube al algorithm is going to be for that day and if I was really going to get paid the amount that I should be paid for a video that I put hours of work into. But I do understand the sentiment in YouTubers complaining about it, but I don't think complaining about it is going to get you anywhere. So you know, just wait it out, I guess. Wait it out. What do you say to people that say you take yourself too seriously? I say those people take me too seriously. I don't take my se myself seriously in the slightest. I just give my opinion on the music. I tell people I have strong dislikes, I have strong likes, but that doesn't mean I take it, any of it seriously. Like there are some people that need to step back and realize that this is the internet. Stop being so sensitive. I can say how I feel about something without you getting offended. Calm down. If an artist can watch me and compliment me on the fact that I did still give them critique, but they still enjoy the video, you can calm down because it's not that serious. I think that's gonna wrap it up, man. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I, I really hope that, you know, this explains a good amount. Uh, basic questions that people wanna know about me. How tall am I? I'm just under six foot one. How much do I weigh? 140. What my ethnicity is? Black Arabian and West Indian. Uh, and do I have a girlfriend? I'm supposed to say yes, but I don't, no, no. Other than that, I think that covers everything. This is just an incredible moment, I guess, for my channel. Uh, like I said, I've covered everything I needed to talk about. I wanted to thank all you guys out there for, you know, continuously showing your support, your, your constant love, the feedback that I've been getting on the videos is amazing. The recognition I've received not only from you guys, but from other YouTube reviewers, other uh, polarizing figures in the music community, uh, other artists, you know, people like The Underachievers, Post Malone, uh, Black, uh, Mac Miller, all these artists that have, you know, kind of reached out and, you know, expressed their gratitude for uh, the channel and expressed, you know, their gratitude for the opinions. I really appreciate it. We'll see where we're at by the end of the year. We'll see where we're at by next year and uh, we'll just, we'll keep it moving. We'll keep going. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you. I love you. Uh, I love the fact that you're coming back. I love the fact you're going to be here for my next video. And um, yeah, stick around for the ride because it's going to be a roller coaster. We're going to see what happens next. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you. Thank you for 100,000 subscribers. We're going to keep moving, keep pushing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.